874. Let us sing. Jesus is Lord, my Redeemer, how he loves me, how I love him, he is risen, he is coming, Lord come
regarding who's, who can go to heaven, who is going to heaven. But in 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. This, uh, you know, we should recognize here that that you know, this is saying, hey, there's not a certain number going to heaven. There, you know, there's not uh, 100, only 144,000 going to heaven. Uh, that you know, God doesn't want anybody to be lost, anybody to perish, and we should understand that. We should give thanks for that. God wants all people to be saved, and it's imperative that we share the message that we evangelize, that we go out, that we go to others within this community, around the world, and within our own uh, family. Paul says in 1 Timothy 2, 3, he supports what Peter has said there in 2 Peter 3, 9. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all men to come to the knowledge of truth. So we got Peter and Paul talking about this all men to come to repentance. Doesn't want anyone to perish. And folks, it's up to us to carry this saving message out into the world. It's also incumbent upon each one of us to strengthen ourselves and to help strengthen each other, each other family member, so that we can repel the attacks of Satan. Because as we progress, and as we succeed, Satan's going to hit us. Satan's going to do everything that he can do to stop us from succeeding, to stop us from marching forward. Jesus had the plan as to what he wanted us to do. We all know it, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Go into all the world. Make disciples, baptizing teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. This message to go, to make disciples, to baptize, to teach is the evangelism prong okay, of the work of the church. It's up to us. But here's one, one kicker here. We're not told how to go. We're told to go. The how is left up to us. Knowing that in different times, <laughs> the how may be, may be uh, uh, different methods to be employed. The how may be differently for, different for our congregation as it will be maybe for the one down the road. Who knows? But the how is left up to us. Now we're informed right after the resurrection, the apostles remained around Jerusalem, and I'm sure they did the event. Uh, uh, what evangelizing could be done, you know, around there. Uh, but uh, we're told there in Acts 8, 4, that, that the Christians, many Christians were scattered because of the persecution. The apostles stayed around Jerusalem doing their work, teaching, preaching, doing, doing what they could, but a lot of the individual Christians were scattered. So, you know, the church scattered, and in a way... Uh, the gospel went. These individuals went out from Jerusalem. The early church there in Acts 13, 1, we see, sent out missionaries. They sent out evangelists to spread the gospel out into the further parts of the kingdom there. And the Lord sent Paul to evangelize the Gentiles even. Okay, so we've got individuals going out We've got individuals within Jerusalem there uh, evangelizing and telling others about God. We've got specific missionaries that have been set forth. Very similar, folks, to what we have here. Skyline has taken this seriously in going into the, all the world and also our community and also our families. Proof of family and friends being taught the word of God sits right here in the, in the pews today. Many of you have participated in missionary trips abroad. vast majority of you support and even attend Maywood Christian Camp, even the adults going for all week, all week. 
Hey, we have a very active uh, Lads to Leaders program with the young people as well as the adults participating in that. We have uh, food baskets given to the needy, money given for good deeds. We've, had, we've got calls and visits being made to, to members to check on uh, many of our individual members. And then going into the world where we cannot go, we pool our funds to support missionaries. I hope you could, can name the missionaries that, that we've got on the foreign field. Uh, I don't believe that we raise these names up enough as we should within our worship service and in our prayers, and so we need to start doing this. We've got Chris and Michelle Hurd family in New Zealand. Many of y'all probably, probably didn't know that. Chris and Michelle Hurd. Uh, we've got Ronnie and Haritha Gudum in India. We've got Wayne Barrier working within world evangelism. And we've got Jerry Bakes working in, in Asia and Africa. And those are the missionaries that this congregation helps support to be on the mission field worldwide. Foreign mission work is very critical to accomplishing the Great Commission in going to the all all the world. However, we've got to recognize that our foreign mission effort will only be successful if our home base mission effort here within our community and within our families is on solid footing. Foreign mission will not work without a home base, a solid home base here at the congregation. The needs of the, of the congregation here at home has got to be met first or otherwise we can't send anybody out. And with the Lord's help, through your work, your generous contribution and donations, we look forward to many years of what I believe we have, a balanced evangelism program, both here at home, with us working, and with abroad with our foreign missionaries. So that's the evangelism part, okay, of the Great Commission. The next one, we've got edification. That's us, folks, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's you building me up and me building you up is part of this, this, this three-pronged uh, emphasis within the Lord's work. Uh, I want you to improve spiritually, and I want you to help me to improve spiritually. I want you to help me study. I want to help you study. And I want us to gather uh, continually improve our knowledge and our understanding of God's word. John Adam very ably leads us in the ed educational process and it's, it's accomplished. He, he's got some good teachers helping him. Uh, the material will help us uh, in, in our service to God and to each other. Uh, we've got a very, very dedicated group uh, of teachers within our Bible school. Jonathan and Paige inspire our, our, our young people uh, with that uh, excellent interaction between uh, the good times and the fun times uh, with the, uh, with the uh, uh, programs and the studies that they do in, in class. You know, that's that balanced approach that we need so much with our young people. And this year, Mike's challenged us all to, to read through the Bible uh, in a year. And I hope you're doing that. You know, you should be right there in the first few chapters of Exodus uh, if, if you are doing it daily. Uh, you still have time to catch up. It's not overwhelming and it doesn't take very long. Five, ten minutes, is th that's it. And you will have your Bible reading done. So, uh, you know, if you haven't started that, get on that. Uh, statistics show a retention rate of 80% of our young people if they participate in the Lads to Leaders program. Teens without Lads to Leaders program, we've got a 40 to 50% retention rate. So that says a whole lot about the Lads to Leaders program and the other programs that we've got going on uh, here. Another very important aspect of edification is through the fellowship we have one with another, both within our homes, as well as here at the church building or out at the 
the ball fields or out here with the kickball or at the lake with the volleyball or at Tom Bigby with the, with the retreat. Fantastic, fantastic stuff there. These spiritual family times are important to us. And we look forward to more time together to strengthen the love we have for God and the love we have for each other. Our benevolence program, third prong of our outreach. Pineville Children's Home, holiday meal and, and, and fruit baskets, individual member assistance and when and where needed. We have seriously discussed other avenues of benevolence, okay, that, that will have the most impact within our community. And I pray that soon we can prioritize some of these. Uh, and really get more going within our, our benevolent program. But the church of the New Testament, we can read, they were a very caring and giving group of individuals, feeding the widows. They even sold their possessions, okay, to supply the needs of the church. They collected funds from each other, setting them aside to send to other congregations, and they spread the gospel despite, despite, possibility of them being uh, being killed. Now folks, those are some big shoes to fill. But we've got to fill them. God is counting on us in this community to represent him and to go. And I challenge you this morning. We're on the verge of going in a big way and I want you to understand that we're going to go collectively forward for God. You know, we've risen to the occasion here every time something's been given to us. There are many, many areas where our spiritual family uh, has excelled. Your interest in bringing family, friends, and neighbors, first of all, is unreal to hear the word of God. The constant increase in our attendance numbers over the past few years has been phenomenal. We've got an unheard of 85% return rate, okay, from Sunday morning to Sunday afternoon or evening. That's unreal. The church has 50% usually. That's, they consider that good. We've got an 85% return rate. And our Wednesday night attendance, this past Wednesday night, I uh, didn't put the number down. I think it was like 96. Uh, I think Bill or somebody told me we, we had like, nine, no, Mike said we, 96, yes, he said, that's it, 96 this past Wednesday night. 96 was a good number for us on Sunday, only a few months ago. Do you see what's happening? Do you see what's happening? Number of volunteers also, at the drop of a hat, ready to help in, in any way possible, from moving somebody uh, on, on one rainy afternoon to, to, to repairing uh, things here at the building to repairing uh, uh, homes with various things wrong. Uh, John Mark, can, uh, you know, is out there uh, doing a lot of work even here in the building, you know, and, and, and I, I mean, it's just unreal. And then uh, the one, one of you ladies can, can put on group me, hey, uh, I'm not going to be able to teach class this morning. Uh, can somebody help? Five seconds? Five seconds later, somebody says, I'll take it. I'll take it. I mean, this is, this is, uh, this is unreal. You know, the ladies' willingness, eagerness, and love for God spurs them to, to start these, these monthly women classes, or ladies' classes. Uh, and, and, and they handle everything. The program, the food, the, the uh, uh, camaraderie. I mean, it's, it's the men, uh, as I said, you know, willing to step up and do anything that needs to be done. And we have met and exceeded the budgets given to us every year, every year. There is a feeling of love within this congregation. There's a feeling that each one of us loves God, we love Jesus, 
We love the church. We love each other. This can be felt. It can be seen. And I believe this is the, one of the, the, the reasons for our success. And I want it to continue. All right. But with this growth that we've had and what will continue, I'm, I'm confident, come certain good problems that have to be addressed. Last Sunday, the number, uh, let's see, was 119, and we counted 11, 11 people absent, so that puts us last Sunday at about 130 in attendance. History has shown that at 145, chairs have to be put in the aisles, and chairs have been put in the, the foyer. Our nursery is far too small for the number of babies we have, and we've got more on the way. We don't have a separate classroom for the toddlers. I'm convinced we've got to get a classroom for the toddlers. We've got a lot of rambunctious little ones, and we need a place for them to play that is separate from our babies. Our classrooms for our elementary kids, way too small way too small. We need some larger classrooms uh, for them. On a normal Sunday morning, our parking lot's already full. Now. Now. Here lately, there just hadn't been enough parking spots. Last week, there were some cars parked in the traffic lanes in the, in the parking lot, uh, some blocking exits, and at times, we've had to park some across the street. So our parking lot is, is way full. Fellowship room, when everybody's here, will not hold all of us. Won't do it. It's been full at special events held here at the building. And our young people, as well as some of us older ones, Jeff, I've seen you out there, love that basketball goal. And that's great, but we're playing in the parking lot. And our little ones out there playing as well, running around the parking lot, unfortunately, in and out of cars and stuff. It's a dangerous situation there. We, we need a place for the younger ones and us older ones to play sometimes. Church growth experts state that growth is stymied whenever auditorium, classroom, or available parking reaches 80% of capacity. Folks, we're there. We're there in almost every one of those areas. <clears throat> it's evident to me that we will need to prioritize our needs, develop an overall plan of action, and begin the process of phasing in what, what we need to, be, need to do. You will be challenged this morning. Chaz will challenge you to think about what we want to do and how you're going to be or should want to be a part of it. So in an effort to, to find solutions to these concerns, the elders have appointed five men to a committee to look into uh, what options we have. Uh, these men, each one of them enthusiastically accepted this assignment. Chaz Goff, John Adam Goff, Brad Ivey, Jonathan Bates, and Jeff Stark. Elders appreciate their will willingness to serve in this capacity, and we thank them up front for this endeavor. There's a lot of things to think about, and we want to accomplish these things. We want to get there, and we're going to get there together with God's help. We welcome your suggestions as we start this project. We pray that these solutions, all right, will be, will be made to better our ability to go. We pray that these changes will be made to help encourage the edification of each one of us. And we pray that these efforts will help us in our benevolent areas. Let it be known far and wide that the congregation here at Skyline, everything we do is to bring glory and honor to God. 
and to please him. We ask for your prayers and assistance as we move forward. Find a comment made by God in Genesis 11, 6. Very interesting. It's when the people uh, had come together there and they wanted to construct that tower. God looks down at them there in verse 11, 6 and says, Indeed, the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Why? Because there was one language. They were on the same page. They were working together. Folks, we can do the same thing here. So let's have patience with one another. Let's come up with some good ideas. Let's rise to the occasion be able to accomplish these projects and let's give God the praise, honor, and glory through him. This morning, if you need to respond to the invitation to become a child of God in baptism or to be reconciled to God by your repentance of sins, come forward now while we stand and sing.